Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Entrepreneurship Tuesday. We are all about matters, business, and economic growth as well. And we have an interesting guest who is live with us in the studio. But first things first, you can interact with us on our social media, and that includes Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter as well. Is at Y254 channel. You can find us on the hashtag Why in the Morning. And by the way, we are available on DSTV, Go TV, literally all TV distribution platforms as Y254 channel. And we also got a TikTok channel as well at Y254 channel and personally at Brian Sokwa 101, including everywhere else on social media. Now, the topic that we're about to delve into is a very interesting topic. If you are an interested person, just move close to your TV with a pen and paper because you're going to talk about cross-border trade. What exactly is it? And uh, none other than to talk about this is the president of the... Uh, she's the president of DSC to Kenya Chamber of Commerce, uh, Christine Miner. She's live with us in studio. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Brian. All right, you're welcome. How are you thank feeling you this so morning? Much. Good, good. Uh, the weather is cool. Yeah. Yes, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. It yes. was raining cats and dogs, they say. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but now let's get to know you a little bit. How did you get here? Because I'm looking at it, you know, when you say a president, you know, it means you're serving, and this is a position of leadership. Now, just talk about a little bit of your journey and how you got to be the president of DRC to Kenya Chamber of Commerce. Yes, so first um, I'm going to explain the DRC Kenya Chamber of Commerce is, um, would say, a platform or an organization that is advocating for bilateral trade between Kenya and the DRC. Right. So the reason why it was founded in 2021, it's been two years so far, was because we saw that there was a gap um, between the trade that um, the rest of East African countries are doing with DRC and Kenya. And right. so there was the need of uh, educating people and just sensitizing the business community that there is opportunity in DRC and right. vice versa, sensitizing the Congolese that they should look at Kenya as a market um, and also the potential that is also in Kenya for the Congolese market. Right. So, but my journey um, as an entrepreneur, because I am an entrepreneur, right. started in um, when I was just 21. I launched my first business in South Sudan. Right. Um, and it was actually a manufacturing business. Right. I was very young and it was quite risky, but I, I, I heard of the opportunity in this country. Right. I remember we had a small juice business um, with my, my mom right. and the business was not doing so well here. The competition in Kenya was very high. Right. And so someone told me, why don't you take your business to South Sudan? The country right. is very hot and I think your juice would do very well there. Right. Um, and believe it or not, I reached out to one of my friends who was there. Right. I got a little bit of capital. I think it was $400, right. um, a ticket. And I went with my goods and my raw materials to make juice in South Sudan. Right. And um, that's where my, my journey started. Right. And it went well, but I had to progress into soap making business. So right. this was now at 22 years. Right. Um, I had my own employees and then moved on to starting a um, marketing and PR firm. Right. in South Sudan, where I was right. for about five to six years. Mm -hmm. And so my move now, when I was in South Sudan, I was part of the Kenya um, Business Association in South Sudan, right. the Association of Kenyans in South Sudan. And okay. we used to assist Kenyans a lot when it came to issues like um, when some people are arrested or issues to do with burial or just Kenyans who want to invest in South Sudan and they want to find their way around the government offices. Right. So I was part of the, the association leadership and also welcoming the politicians and the leaders from Kenya who'd come to South Sudan and tell them what our issues were, liaising right. with the embassy. And so when I moved, when there was issues in South Sudan and moved business to DRC, I continued to do the same. Right. So my passion was to really assist and sensitize Kenyans on the opportunities across our border. Because right. I believe that our people are very industrious, right. uh, very hardworking. And yeah. so I, I believe that there are opportunities for Kenyans across the border. And right. so that is the, why I continued in DRC and did the same by um, launching the Chamber of Commerce and, of right. course, leading it, yes. Right, interesting, John, because I'm looking at it like you went as a person selling Jews and now you are <laughs> rose to, yeah. to now, uh, this throne that you have right now, being the president. Now, oh, I, 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 just to back data a little bit, initially before, before you went that direction, you mentioned that you did marketing. Yeah. Like, how did you lose off and edge out of that to this? So I, I, well, I did, you know, this is what happens, I think, with business people. Right. We do move a lot with um, the demand in the market. So you move from one product to another or a service to another based on the demand that's already there. And that's, that's, that's my business journey, 
basically. And so I moved from PR and marketing, not because uh, I wanted to actually, but because um, the war that started in South Sudan. Right. So a lot of people left. Um, there was an exit of a lot of businesses. And, right. you know, during that period of exiting, you don't know what to, that's when I just uh, moved business to, to DRC. I was right. also doing logistics. So I, when I moved to DRC, I didn't move with a marketing and PR firm. I just moved with uh, logistics. Right. Um, I had been in contact with DRC markets when I was right. still in South Sudan. So it was just natural for me to continue as we wait for the issues in South Sudan to settle. So while right. I was in DRC is when I noticed uh, that, um, first of all, there weren't many Kenyans. And especially right. in the areas of Kinshasa, right. I would imagine maybe it's because of the language barrier and also right. a lot of people do not know the opportunities that are there. Because so, they speak French? Yes, they also, yeah, like the language barrier, they speak French and Lingala. Right. However, I always say that language barrier But you're conversant not, with that as well? <laughs> yes. By, by <laughs> now you can speak Lingala and French? No, not Lingala, but yeah. uh, French, intermediary French. French, yes. Okay. But I always say that language should not be a barrier. Uh, right. Because when I went there for the first five, six, seven years, I wasn't speaking French and right. I was still able to do business. Right. And so by noticing that there, weren't, there wasn't many Kenyans and you would notice that there are so many Chinese and Indians and Lebanese, just people from all over. And also Uganda, you get into supermarkets, you find Ugandan goods, but you just don't find any Kenyan products anywhere or just right. Kenyans basically trading. So yeah. that's the push that um, caused us to come together with the officials on that side and decide to, to promote trade right. between Kenya and DRC through the chamber. Wow, interesting. Yes. And, and if I were to ask, uh, what are some of maybe the achievements that you managed to bug, not only just for yourself, that you'd say, uh, even when you, had a, when you have a chance again to meet the current president, that you'd say maybe, yes, I achieved this, but I think the government should come in and at least do extra. What are, yes. what, what are some of them? So apart from uh, in, uh, at assisting individual business people to set up in DRC, just okay. assisting them to get through the legal requirements, um, educating them on the culture, differences between our country and DRC. We've been able to do a lot of sensitization in Kenya through several events. Right. We were able to, to do an agribusiness uh, conference, right. the very first, I should say, conference if, with the DRC government in Kenya, in Kenya. to ever right. been done. So we did that last year. Uh, the agribusiness conference was a success and we were able to secure tracts of land for several Kenyan investors to, right. to, to, to do, agri, to do uh, agro production in, in DRC. We were right. also able to launch something called the micro and small enterprise uh, package for the right. chamber. Yeah. I am a strong believer that right. cross-border trade is not just for the big wigs. Right. It's not just for the big banks and the yeah. big corporations because right. I went across the border with my small juice business. Right. So I'm very passionate with assisting the micro and small enterprise um, community right. to also think about you know, crossing the border with their trade. And right. so we did a successful launch of the micro and small enterprise uh, package. And right. uh, just uh, this next week, we're right. actually launching an ad network platform. Okay. We've been able to get data for 12 million Congolese a market right. of 12 million that's, Congolese. That's a huge number. Yes. It's like half of the population. Yes, so we have access quarter. to 12 million Congolese um, right. online. And uh, through our ad network, which we are launching in the next one or two weeks, our micro and small enterprise will be able to access the, 12, the, million of, the market of 12 million people um, through our website. It's going to be a self-service ad advertising platform that right. is very, very affordable and very well customized um, uh, based on the products and the services that our business people are going to be advertising. So that the, the idea of that Congo is so far and right. you know we always have to come and maybe connect you with someone physically. Okay. You just get on the platform, put your products and your services and you're yeah. able to access the market um, in the DRC. And right. of course vice versa for the Congolese who are in Kenya. Something right. else we've also been able to do, there's a lot but I'll say this finally, okay. um, we've been able to secure scholarships through the Common, Commonwealth of Learning um, through uh, P4CDA, we've been able to secure 200 scholarships for online courses right. um, in, in about, about 10,000 courses online right. for the Congolese and the Kenyans, especially those who just left university who are looking to, to have extra skills so that they are more employable. So right. these are some of the things that we've been able to do as a chamber. Wow, fantastic. Great achievements yes. right there because I'm looking at it also f as well as from your background, like how you started and, and here you are. Now, uh, let's switch gears a little bit. For a person who's watching right now and uh, they want to go that direction, of course, these are two countries neighboring each other 
and how he is trade involved. Maybe what are some of the rules and the fundamentals and some of the basics that they need to be aware in terms of even trade? And this includes even, uh, I understand something like tax, tax restraints uh, can come up, when, especially in, when it's between two countries that are trading. Of course, the constitution of that country and ours, there's things they have to agree on. I, I understand also before it escapes, trade embargoes. I, I don't know if you met that as well. Well, like you, you realize Kenya, we can't do this, but in Congo, we can do this. But then let's sit down and talk and have a conversation and then we can allow this to happen. Yeah. So talk about that for a person who is watching right now. Yes. So, and this is where, like I think you had asked before, where would we want assistance from government? I think our government has done a lot so far um, to allow uh, trade to flow freely between the DRC and Kenya. Number one is that DRC joined East African community. So that was a very big step. Right. Uh, because once they join, a lot of um, you know legal requirements are going to be a bit you know almost the same between the countries. Customs for goods are going to be unified, but I would say that there are still um, a lot of issues um, or I'd say challenges between the two countries. Number one is that we do not share a border, right. um, so for us to, to to trade with the DRC, it means that the logistics costs would be higher than than you know our neighboring countries. Right. Um, number two would be, of course, the language barrier. Um, right. And other things I would say, like, for example, there are some products that we sell in Kenya, like Mira. Right. Yeah. And in DRC, they consider it a drug. Right. So just being able to discuss with the government and, and, and show them that this is not a drug, this is a product we sell in Kenya and we export, and right. it is actually safe for consumption. Those are some of the issues that we always have to discuss and advocate with the government to allow the products in Kenya to be sold in DRC. Right. Um, but I would say that with especially the peace process right. that Kenya has been championing, uh, yeah. the Nairobi agreement and the Angola ag ag agreement, the Luanda agreement, right. it's, it's come a long way in making sure that there is peace in the eastern side of DRC. Okay. Because Kenya trades a lot more with the eastern side of DRC. Right. Uh, why? Because it's closer and also because they speak Swahili. Right. And so just the, the step that the East African community has taken to enable peace in the eastern uh, part of DRC is right. also very encouraging for the business community and we are hoping that with the strides they've taken that we're going to see a peaceful DRC because DRC is open for business right. and then there's going to be confidence in people again to to trade with the country but let me just say like I always say right. that uh, DRC is a safe country and the issues yeah. that are there are mostly on the eastern side All so right. there's another whole part of the country that you yeah. can actually safely trade and uh -huh. that's why we advise people at the chamber. Before you invest, come to us. Let us advise you based on the product and the service that you want to, to take to the country, which right. are the best areas for it. So that you don't waste a lot of time doing your market research only to end up with information that we already had for you. Right. So you, it could be something that we believe in Goma it, would do, it, would, it won't do well. Right. It would probably do well in Kinshasa or in Lumumbashi. Right. So these are the kind of advice that we are able to give. What are the places that are high security? The security is not so good. And which right. are the places that are safe. But right. so far, the government has been very helpful. I think um, apart from just, uh, you know, unifying, um, you know, the common market between DRC and the East Africa, once we're able to see that and the no visa policy, right. then I think... Does it still apply? Better. The no, uh, has it yet been approved? The Not no yet. I, I think it's still, it's still in the works. But um, so far, Kenyans can get visa on arrival or right. you can just get the visa at the DRC embassy in Kenya before traveling there. Right. Yes. From, from, from what I hear you saying is that there's a lot of opportunities in there. Yes. And, and, and what if when it comes to mentorship, especially young people that have dreams of being like you in, 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 in Lubumbashi or Goma, like you mentioned, are there maybe platforms that yeah, they can access right here in Kenya or just in case they're in, on the other side as well? And there's a place where you mentioned uh, the Kenyan embassy partnering with also the Kenyan embassy in DRC and also vice versa as well. Yes, so, so far we, our plans for the youth have started with us, uh, with the scholarship program that we've started with. We're in partnership with, um, with a consulting firm in the DRC that does mentorship for the youth. Right. And so the first step was to offer the scholarships for, because I, we found that that was the need that they have most right. to be skilled and be able to be ready for the, for the job market. However, we do work closely, like I said, with the embassy, the Kenyan embassy in DRC. Uh, whenever we need any assistance or whenever we are stuck or there are challenges, we definitely contact our embassy in DRC. And whenever we also have uh, like the events we had here in Kenya where we had the delegation from the DRC um, 
come for the agribusiness conference. We liaised with the DRC embassy in Kenya. And so we work closely with both embassies to make sure that their solutions um, and that the challenges are met. Right. Yes. Interesting. Uh, do you guys have uh, uh, things like uh, trade fairs and expos? that foster, let's say, cultural exchange. Uh, there's a place where you mentioned, how's the culture in DRC and what's the culture in Kenya? Can they interact and can we come up with something special? Do you, have you conducted that so far that has enabled trade between both sides? Yeah, so we were part of the trade mission that was done by uh, Equity and the DRC and Kenyan government in 2021. Right. And it was a successful trade mission of about 300 Kenyan business people that traveled to Kinshasa, Lumumbashi, Goma, and Bujimai. Right. Uh, so that was one of the trade missions we were part of. So we've not had our own, but we've been, we've been working in partnership with other organizations that are, hold, are holding trade missions and sensitize uh, the business communities of the trade missions that are in existence. We were also part of um, another uh, trade mission last year, but the trade mission was between um, really the rest of Africa and DRC. So right. we were also in partnership with, with an organization that held a trade mission last year in June. Uh, however, our plan really is, um, our plan is to actually customize business trade fairs, I would say, or business missions, let me call them business missions, for right. smaller groups. Because right. we find that uh, when it's a trade mission for a bigger group, people feel that their needs have not been met right. or it was really generalized. So yeah. what we're doing is we're organizing business missions that are okay. specific to the sectors for our business um, for our business community in Kenya and in DRC. All right. So if it's hospitality, we do a small mission for a few people for hospitality. If it's ICT and then all the other sectors. All right. Interesting. Yes. And uh, 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 what are some of the, let's say, tips? Uh, uh, you had shared that in one of your descriptions that uh, what are some of the tips for the youth maybe and also women? You know, there's something called FLEM, female-led and made enterprises, that is to support the women, girl power, hey. Yeah. What are some of the tips that uh, you'd give for people, especially like general now? You can just give general. But also if you want to narrow it down to the women that yes. would want to uh, venture into cross-border trade. Number one, I'd say, first of all, just be confident. Okay. Uh, be confident and be ready to, to take the risk. Uh, so that's the first step. And, and second, don't be in a rush to, you know, you hear that places like DRC have potential. And I think a lot of people think I'm just going to get, go there and become a millionaire instantly. But there are certain disciplines to any business, whether it's in Kenya or you're crossing the border. Right. Uh, secondly, don't cut corners. Third, okay. I always say, do not cut corners. So it doesn't matter who tells you, I'll find this for you in an easy way. You don't have to do this. You don't have yeah. to, you know, you don't have to go through the registration process as oh, they the tell you. Process, yes. No. I okay. always say don't cut corners because it will come back and bite you. So right. just follow the due process. Be patient. And as long as you have guidance, and that is why the DRC Kenya Chamber of Commerce is in existence, as, on, as long as you have guidance of people who know the market and understand the market and the environment, then you'll be good to go. Also, be very uh, cautious of the, of the culture. Uh, I think you find that a lot of people probably your business is doing so well here. You know, you're, the, you're known and you're famous and people love your product. And right. then you cross the border and no one really knows you, knows you right. exist. And you have to humble yourself yeah. <laughs> and, and start pick up from, from scratch. And pick up from scratch. So yeah. be ready to do that. Be ready to be patient with people because you're, you're talking about people from different cultures. Right. Yes. Interesting. And maybe just briefly, I had forgotten, I must ask this. <laughs> For a person who wants to export and import products from both sides, is there maybe like a process or is there a portal? Um, do they have to go to the embassy as well? Um, the, this platform that you've created will enable them to do that seamlessly. Yes, exactly. So the platform we've created is actually to, to, to cater for that, which has been a challenge. Right. Um, number one, getting the market. And number two, getting your goods across the border. Right. So when we launch the ad network, uh, the platform on our website, exactly. then the market will be able to access. Uh, will be able to access either markets through our platform. Right. And I th movement of goods between the countries is really not an issue. Actually, it's never been an issue. Okay. It's just that people need to be guided okay. on which areas they should uh, focus on. In matters All right. Of uh, my director tells me we are past our time, like already five minutes. So uh, I'd just like you to advise uh, anyone who is uh, passionate about what you do and they have uh, uh, dreams and ambitions to be like you, your word to them and where people can find you. Do you have a social media platform, a portal, etc. in just less than a minute? Uh, this is your camera. 
yes. Um, so our social media platforms at Safe for the Chamber is uh, our website is www.drckenyachamber.com. We are also on Twitter and we are also on LinkedIn as DRC Kenya Chamber. Um, I myself am also on Twitter and I'm also on LinkedIn as Christine Miner on both platforms. All right. Yes. Uh, I know you can't give you a number, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, once You're they go to the website, they'll be. Once they go to the website, website there's a number that they number. can contact. Yes. All right. Yes. Interesting. Thank you so much. You have been speaking to Christine Miner. She's the president for DRC Kenya Chamber of Commerce, telling us just a quick scan through of what happens right then. Definitely, if you're watching right now, you've learned one, two, three things that will help you go in that direction. And as well, she has left her details. If you're interested, please go there right now and interact with her and contact her. On this note, we're going to take a very short break. We are coming back next with the rest of the programming. Kalami Val is up next, so stick around for that conversation. At 2244 channel, at Brian Sakwana 1, the hashtag is still live in the morning. Stick around. <laughs>